Hey guys, so this is a vintage FAF 130 that I'm uh, fixing that was broken when I got it. Um, a number of things were wrong with it, um, but after I pulled it apart, one of the most uh, glaring issues that I had to uh, address first was the uh, dial a stitch knob here that controls the, the zigzag and straight stitch um, width was broken. So on the left, you'll see this is the bad one. And you can see a hole here um, where there should be a stop screw. And then this is a good one. You can see that the stop screw is right there. These are a little bit different in that this one doesn't have the screw come all the way through or the stop all the way through. But this one does. You can see it um, on the uh, top side there. And what this basically does is that stop screw um, rides in this cutout here. And this cutout are basically stops that limit the amount of travel that this knob can make when you're turning it from a straight stitch, which is zero, to a zigzag four millimeters in width. So what happened was this stop was, bro <clears throat> was broken. And so you were getting, you would turn the knob and it would over travel, um, which, caused this, which would cause you to go from zigzag to straight stitch, but then it would over travel and then it would do the opposite zigzag um, stitch because you were overthrowing it. Then if you were to go in this direction, you were, you were able to over travel on that knob and then you'd have a stitch width that was actually wider than the needle plate. So the, the last foot on here um, was beat up from where the needle was striking the outsides of the presser foot. Or I mean of the, uh, of, yeah, the, of the actual presser foot. So uh, thankfully it kept the um, needle plate intact, but the presser foot was messed up. I've since replaced that. But I wanted to show you how you can repair these, or at least how I went about repairing it. I'm still actually in the process, but I figured I'd film it now before I had it totally together. So what I did was I got a pair of calipers and I measured the width of this pin. And I ended up getting about 3.8 millimeter width on that. 3.81, 3.82, it varied. And then I went around the shop and I, in my uh, garage and I kind of looked for um, items that were steel that would fit the bill um, width. And I ended up using just the tip of this drill bit here, uh, which I believe is a 5.32nd. And it's, it's pretty close. It's slightly larger by 0.01 millimeters around there when I measured it so that's okay it'll have a little bit less travel but not enough to make a difference um, and then to figure so that was the width taken care of then to figure out the depth and the length of this piece I, I did the depth setting to see how far down this hole was and then I took that number and I added it for how tall this one was and that gave me an overall length I then took the end of the drill bit bit and I marked it off with a piece of tape covering up the area that I wanted to keep, which is this section here, this little piece on the end. So that gave me my length. I took a Dremel with a cutoff bit and I went through and cut it off. So there's my piece. Now the bottom of the drill bit is flat and that's all I care about. The top where I cut it with the Dremel isn't perfectly flat. That's okay, it doesn't matter because it's basically free floating in that groove. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to mix together some epoxy which I have here. I'm going to mix that up and I'm going to put it in this hole. I'm going to scuff this up. For, uh, I'm going to scuff it up with some sandpaper to get a better bond with the epoxy and then I'm going to drop it in here, press it in place. It basically self-centers on this hole actually so um, and then I'm going to smooth out uh, the epoxy around it. I'm just going to let it sit even if it's a little bit high. And then what I'll go through is I'll go through with a little file or a little sandpaper and I'll clean up the surrounding area. Uh, and then that hopefully will be strong enough. I don't know. I haven't done it yet. I'm hoping that'll be strong enough with the ep epoxy it down in there. Um, so just wanted to throw that out there if you guys have ran into uh, a similar issue on some of these older fats. This isn't a true plastic. I think it's a Bakelite, so it's it's pretty brittle. Uh, so this isn't all that uncommon. I have another one, FAF 130, where the knob was just cracked and broken apart. So these are hard to come by. So if you can repair them, 
uh, you should go for it. So that was how I addressed that repair and uh, hopefully it works out. I'll do maybe another video follow up um, to kind of uh, let you know how it went. So there is just a quick repair on a FAF 130 uh, dial a stitch knob. So there you go. Thanks. Alright guys, so here it is. I went through and I uh, mixed my epoxy together. Uh, mixed it up thoroughly so it had a chance to really uh, mix well. Uh, I cleaned, a uh, after sanding the little piece of metal, <clears throat> I sand it horizontally, um, not vertically, so it has uh, basically little ridges for the epoxy to seat into and, and get a, give a better bond. I wiped everything down with Q-tips and, um, and denatured alcohol to clean it out and remove any of the oils that would uh, make for a poor bond. And I went ahead and I filled about half the hole up with epoxy. And then I grabbed the little metal piece, pushed it down um, until I was certain that the bottom was totally flush. And then I checked it on the sides to make sure it looked like it was perpendicular to the face of the um, knob. And then I put a little bit more epoxy around uh, just to raise it just a hair. So it's, it's just a hair above right now. And then once this epoxy sets and hardens, it'll, um, I'll go through with a little sandpaper or a little file and I'll smooth that all down flush uh, to make sure that, uh, that the actual epoxy itself doesn't interfere with the rotation of the knob, but that way I have maximum adhesion and contact. So there it is. Uh, hopefully it works out. Uh, I'll add a last clip hopefully when it's all dried up and I've sanded it down and we'll see how it works.